Today we're talking about dynamic stretching, the sitting box, and the reformer. Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're going to explore the reformer, the big cat stretch, and the sitting box. So we're going to start with the fast dynamic pulsations. And in fascial fitness, they do this on the mat with no support for the hands or the upper body. So it, it looks something like this. So the knees are bent. The lower back is rounded, the tail is dropped, and you hold, you hold on to one wrist and you push forward while you pull back. So it's a little pulsation. And then you spring up and you change sides. And you spring up and you also do this in an oblique curl, so a little bit of a diagonal. Really getting that stretch in one side of the back and one rib cage. And this is a really nice sequence for those bodies that can do it. However, a lot of people with different sacrum and lower back problems, that sequence is not going to be a good one. So they need more support. And the reformer and the reformer springs are the perfect solution. It's really, really nice. So you can do that fascial fitness exercise in a really supported way. And the spring talks to you about finding more and more length in the front of the spine when you're in that flexed position. So let's start. You're going to have one heel of the hand into the center of the box. I have a red spring on. The opposite hand goes over. The knees are bent, the tail is dropped, and, and the lower back is flexed. And then you push out against the box and the reformer, but you have to meet that push out through the energy of your deep belly moving back. So really think more and more about lengthening in the front of the spine as much as possible. And then you have to communicate with the springs for that easy elastic recoil up. And then you just change. Opposite hand is on the bottom. And tail drops using the spring to lengthen the back smoothly coming up. Elastic recoil up. Now, for most people on this one, it will be the transition of losing the box in the spring and having to come up. And sometimes that's not going to work for a lot of your clients. So the solution here is to round again, doing that pulsating stretch into the lower back, and then allowing the back to come into extension, into neutral, as the, the carriage finds the um, bumper. And then you just change. And flex, and then back into neutral, and change. And back into neutral. And then you can also do this in the, the oblique version. So I'm pressing out, I'm thinking about pulling my body apart on a diagonal, still dropping my tail, and then coming back into my neutral extension. And neutral extension. You can do as many on one side as you want, and then just go to the other side. And you can go as slow or as rhythmical as you'd like. So you figure out what's right for your body or your client's body. All right, so now we're going to look at that slow, dynamic, big cat stretch. And again, the reformer, along with the support of the springs, is so good for this exercise. So I'm going to bring the spring weight down a little bit. I'm going to put a blue spring on, but for some people you might even have to use a yellow. Some might prefer a red, so it just depends on your client. So you'll have one hand in the center of the box, again with the heel of the hand on the box, the other hand at the foot bar. So from here, as you start to press the carriage out, you'll bend one knee, right? And that's the leg knee that you're rotating away from. And then you're going to take the carousel pole of your sacrum, rest of the spine, head towards that long leg. And you want to imagine like you could set a teacup here on your sacrum as you rotate. 
And then the elastic recoil is the wave of the spine back in. And then you change, right? You rotate towards that long leg. You're reaching into the box and the bar equal amount, trying to find balance length on all sides of your spine. And then starting to wave and communicating with the spring in the box as you come in. Changing sides. Now, if your client is doing this, you know that they're bullying the machine in the spring. And so you want to cue them to try to communicate more and to even slide their scapula on the back of their rib cage a little bit so they can see that, that give they have. All right, so that's it. I hope you have fun using the reformer and the sitting box and the different spring tensions to find this third fascial fitness principle. Elisa wrote in two questions that we can answer at the same time. So the first question, she's wondering if we could elaborate more on the cue of slurping the upper inner thigh deeper into the pelvis. And her second question is about a cue, um, cueing the arch of the knee. So she says, in the Refresher Reformer course, session six, week two, core activation, Casey cues pulling up the arch of the knee, starting from the arch of the foot. I think I understand the other arches, domes of the body, but I do not understand what is meant by the arch of the knee. So we're gonna combine these two questions because it's really the, the same thing. So the slurping of the femur head deeper into the pelvis, or you can talk about the slurping of the upper inner thigh into the pelvis, um, and the arch of the knee. So the arch of the knee, a lot of people use pulling up the patella, which could be a good cue, but, but sometimes that creates, for some people, uh, a jamming into the back of their knee. So what we're talking about is we want you to visualize inside your knee, where the condyles of the femurs and the condyles of the, the tibia meet. And inside that is what we're talking about for the, the visualization of doming or, or lifting that arch of the knee. The best way to explore this is on the reformer. So I have a red and a blue, and we're just gonna do some simple footwork. So from here, you could um, have your client at any place on their feet. I'm gonna have the arch of my foot, the, the cup of my heel, the bottom of my arch on the foot. And so if I'm with my client and they're in their neutral um, supine position here. I'm gonna ask them maybe to press out just a little bit so that the spring is preloaded and the spring is already starting to talk to their spine. So I already feel like my inner spring of my spine is pulled apart here. And I'm going for lots and lots of elongation. So introducing this idea of slurping the femur deeper into the pelvis, I'm gonna ask my client to keep the carriage where it is and to use a little bit of Pilates logic and think about creating even more of a slurp of the femur into the hip socket and even more length of the spine but keeping the carriage still, right? And so all already, my, my body is starting to work just a, a little bit more deeper and I can feel that my spine is literally being pulled apart. And then from here, I wanna ask them to start to initiate the floating of the carriage upward by visualizing that femur drawing deeper and deeper into my neutrally parked pelvis. So my femur, drawing my femur deeper and deeper into my hip socket is floating the carriage up. It's also bringing my neutrally parked pelvis and spine all the way up, up, up towards the back of the reformer. Now, here I come to the almost opening of my knee. So here I wanna maybe use some manual touches and also my verbal cues to start to bring that image of the arch of my knee. 
And I want to ask the client to imagine that they could gap the bones of their knees as they do that last little bit of straightening of the leg. So through their brain breath energy, as well as finding a little bit more upward length of the carriage, I want them to imagine that they could put some space between the bottom of their femur and the top of their tibia. And that will create more of a lift, more of a doming inside the knee. And now the coming in, the challenge is, can you keep as much space between your tibia and femur as you come in, right? And at the same time, you're not losing that slurping of the femur head deeper and deeper into the hip socket. So even though I'm coming in, right, I'm keeping that initiation of wanting to lift the carriage up and behind me to the very last moment. I'm not just letting the spring be, bring me in. And with that kind of focus, my whole body is involved in just the right amount. All right, well, I hope that that answered a little bit of the question. Explore this for yourself, explore some of these cues with your clients, and let us know what you come up with. That's it for today. If you have a comment or a question that you'd like to see answered on an upcoming episode, comment below or on Facebook, Twitter, or on the forum on our site. See you next time and never stop learning. <laughs> You're awful. Okay, go ahead. Today we're talking about dynamic stretching. Up. Today we're talking about dynamic stretching, sitting box in the <laughs> <laughs> Let me do it again.